In this video, I'm going to teach spaces and room tags. Spaces are important not only because they allow you to tag the rooms, but because they work with finish schedules to where you can show which finishes belong in which rooms, and also because they're very useful for calculating areas, volumes, and perimeters of spaces. That's very important when it comes to leasable space and also for finish takeoffs um, for owners to understand how much space they have in the various rooms in their project and uh, for many other useful reasons. You have several options in how you create spaces. You can use the ribbon which has a space tool, a space generate tool, and also a zone tool. And on your tool palette on the design tab you have the same tools in addition to a space separator. I'm not going to get into the zone tool in this video but in general that allows you to group spaces together. For example, if you were doing a uh, project that had different tenants, you could uh, group certain tenants together in order to show total areas or do uh, usable versus non-usable spaces and things like that. Normally, I use the Space Generate tool because it automatically searches for boundaries of the rooms. The Space tool is kind of a more generic rectangular shaped space, which might work fine, but it wouldn't be very useful then in calculating areas and things like that. So I'm going to hit Space Generate on my ribbon or on my tool palette. Obviously you have to have all of your walls and doors already completed. Uh, I also generally suggest that you get um, the spaces that you want to name or tag fully in your visible monitor or the, your drawing area so that you can see them all at one time. Usually it works easier that way. After you start your tool, start with kind of the smaller simpler spaces and just simply hover your mouse cursor over the room and you'll see a red outline. So that's the space that AutoCAD Architecture is kind of proposing for that particular room. Obviously it's found this room pretty well so I'm going to go ahead and click my mouse and then it does a cross hatch uh, or that diagonal line hatch across the space. So I can just simply uh, move my mouse down to the next room because the command does stay active. So if I like that perimeter I'll click and then move on. So again, I'm doing all the simple easy rooms first and clicking in each one based upon the red outline that it's offering. So that's pretty much all of the simple rooms on this floor. So I'm going to right click to exit the command. And now let's talk about how to subdivide this large open area. Theoretically, you could label it as one space, but most of the time a floor plan would label this as, for example, living room and dining room or living room and kitchen of uh, maybe a foyer, etc. So we can subdivide this however we want. I'm going to subdivide it um, kind of matching this PDF plan that I'm using as a go by, uh, which has a dining room, living room, kitchen, and foyer labeled. Obviously, you could label this kind of stair vestibule area as one as well if you want it. So I'm going to use that to kind of dictate uh, where I subdivide. So the space separator tool on your tool palette is an easy way for you to subdivide a larger space into smaller regions. So I can hit that space separator and then uh, basically just draw a line with my O snaps across uh, where I want to subdivide. I'm not too concerned about the uh, angle or anything because this is kind of a, the spaces are generally just an internal tool that you use in CAD. It's not like you show these on a floor plan. So um, it's not critical of where one space stops and another starts. The only time that, that would be a little more important is if you are going to do area calculations. Obviously then you want to be a little more precise so that your area calculation makes sense. So there's my subdivider between the foyer and then uh, maybe this all becomes kitchen let's say. So I'm going to do another um, space separator tool from here across to that corner. Now it is also possible to select regular lines in your drawing and allow them to divide spaces. You just have to kind of tell them to do so. You can do that in the properties palette. So I have that line selected and maybe this line as well. And then I'll go to the properties palette and then you can see how at the bottom I have the advanced field expanded with a little arrow. And then where it says bound spaces is set to yes. That by the default is normally no. So I change that ahead of time. So you can just change that so that those lines now understand that they are allowed to or you want them to bound spaces as well. 
Now I'm going to add one more space separator uh, to kind of subdivide my dining room away from the living room. Obviously I want it kind of completely enclosed so I just have to go over to the wall and then the wall will continue the job. All right, so now let me finish my generate. So there's my kitchen, living, and dining rooms. Oh, and I forgot the foyer, so let's add that as well. There it goes. All right, so now I have all of my spaces. So like I said earlier, the space is just a tool really to use in CAD. Um, it goes on its own layer um, because it does work with layer keys like other intelligent objects. And it's going on the A area space layer. So later on, if you get ready to print your drawing, um, you're going to want to either turn this layer off or you can make it a non-plotting layer. Personally, I like to just turn it off because then it's easier to see what's going on. Um, but if you would prefer to, you can uh, make any layer non-printing by changing the clicking on the little printer in your layer manager. If you're working with external references, you would want to do your layer management in terms of printing and on-off color and all that from the sheet file where you're actually going to do your printing from. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to remind everyone is that the separator lines are regular real polylines, so we don't really want those to print either. So I'm going to move those to be on my space layer so that when I turn that off or make it non-printing later on, um, they will not be an issue. Obviously I don't want the random lines showing up on my print. That's it for making the spaces. Now your next step is to assign the data and then we will tag the rooms. So to assign the data you can select a space. Uh, you can actually select all of them at once if you want. If you go to the properties palette you can see on the extended data tab that you don't have any property set definitions assigned by default. And remember the property set definition is kind of the, the data fields that attach the object to whatever tags or annotation you're going to use, including schedules. So we need to attach the property sets first. So I'm going to select all these. Uh, if you want to use quick select or layer isolate or any of those options, that would work as well. This is not that big of a project, so I'm just going to click on them manually. And then go to my properties palette. At the uh, extended data tab, at the very bottom there's a small icon that says add property sets and that actually attaches those data fields so I can hit that and then you have the option of roof room finish objects or space objects the room finish objects is if you're really doing a finish schedule it doesn't hurt to attach both so I'm just gonna leave them both checked and hit OK and now we can see which data is assigned so the space objects are more about the overall space properties themselves and the room finish objects are for doing a finish schedule. So again, a finish schedule normally lists all the rooms along with the floor finish, the wall finish, the ceiling finish, base, etc. All right, so now I need to actually assign the information that I want. So I'm going to hit escape to unselect all of my rooms and select just one in order to assign the name and number that I want for that particular room. So I'm going to go by my PDF here. So the living room is 111 and the dining room is 110 so let's do those two as examples so I can have my space selected go to the properties palette the number is on my extended data tab so that was 111 you will notice that the name is kind of grayed out I can't change that here and that's actually because it's on the design tab so I can change my name on the design tab of the properties palette to living room I'm going to turn on my caps lock and there's my name so that's basically it. What I like to do sometimes is go through and do all the numbers first and then go back and do the names or vice versa. Um, you can also change it to be either associative or not. Just remember when it comes to hat commands, associative means that if the boundary changes that that space or hatch would automatically become enlarged or shrink depending on what you did to the boundary. In other words, it's kind of in trying to be intelligent in that regard. So for hatch or for spaces, that's what associative means. If you don't want it to do that, like if you're still modifying the plan, that actually can be kind of annoying at times. So you can change this to no, to not be associative, and that actually gives you very handy grips. So you can change the size of the space, add more vertex points, etc., um, using the tool on the ribbon. 
So a lot of times I end up making my spaces to, to my spaces non-associative because it um, allows me to be a little more flexible in what I do with them. And then I can hit save, and I, obviously you can continue your naming and numbering process in the same way. I'm going to switch files now because I'm working with external references to do the tags. If you are not working with xrefs, then you would do your tags now right here on your plan. In my case, I have to switch files, reload my xrefs so that my spaces show up. There they are. These old um, room tags in red are just default generic non-intelligent blocks. I had done those earlier to get tags done quickly for all the students so that they would know what the, the names and numbers needed to be. Um, now I can basically do my smart tags and I can delete those later. Um, normally I'd use the smart tags first, but I had to get the plan done very quickly in this project. So if you wonder why I would do non-intelligent tags when I say I need the plan to be done quickly, so if it's quicker to do non-intelligent tags, what's the point in doing the spaces? Well, the point is your room finish schedule becomes an automatic scheduling process. That's where you really pick up your time savings. Because I can throw a non-intelligent block in there quicker than doing these spaces and adding the tags. But by the time you add the room schedule, now you're getting to real, see real time savings in that regard. So I gotta make sure my annotation scale is correct, and then I will hit the room tag and do the simple room tag for now, rather than the project-based or the BOMA one. So I'll hit room tag, and then I'm gonna select the space and then turn off my O snaps and click to place that in the center of my room. You will notice if you scroll down that it's picked up the name and the number from what I assigned in the base file. So you can hit OK. And there is your room tag. <clears throat> you want to make sure that you get your data fully assigned in the base file before you do your tags. There are a few tricks to getting the tags to update properly if you update the space information in the base. Doing the tags will be much easier if you identify all the rooms and number them in your base file first if you're doing xrefs. Because if you do decide that you need to revise a name, name and number, such as this case I changed the living room to room 108. Now, if I already have a tag over here, then the easiest way to get it to update, it doesn't always update automatically. It depends on how the data sets are applied. It's kind of tricky that way. Um, you can erase the tag and do a new tag, select the object, click to drop it. But if you scroll down, you'll see that it still shows the old number of 111. You can force that to update by hitting the X at the bottom to remove the property set definitions and then hit OK on Remove. And that actually forces it to basically refresh the property set information from the base file. So now when you scroll down, it now shows the 108, which it should, because that's what I changed it to in the base. And then hit OK. So again, try to do all your names and numbers in the base first, and then get them right, and then you won't have to worry about that. But if it doesn't become an issue because you need to revise a name or a number, then you can delete the tag, bring in a new tag, and then you just hit that delete on the bottom after you select the space. The tag is a little chunky. It's really larger than it should be. Uh, normally I have customized this tag in the past um, to fit uh, the proper text size, which is 330 seconds, because this is oversized. Um, it's um, a little more than we have time to get into in this video for editing the block. But you can also place it outside of a space, like if it's a small room, let's say a mechanical room, place it outside the room adjacent to it, and then you can add a leader that goes back and attaches to the block. It's a very common method to label a room. So you can do something like this, then I hit escape without and typing any text in, and I'm left with a leader without a text attached, and then I can position a tag next to that so that it uh, is pointing at the space. Just make sure that you put the leader on the room tag layer, which is set up by your layer keys, and you will see that that is A area space IDEN for your room tags.